I am going to. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the August 14th meeting of the Board of Trustees for the Burleson Independent School District. It is now called to order at 5.30 p.m. The meeting was duly posted according to legal requirements and a quorum is present. And thank all of you for being here. At this time, we have our open forum. We have set aside for the public to come and talk. The board encourages public comments during the public comment section of the meeting. Anyone wishing to speak must fill out a card prior to the meeting. Comments are limited to five minutes per person and the public comment section will be limited to no more than 30 minutes. The board may not discuss any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board may defer agenda item discussions until the appropriate time during the meeting. The board asks that citizens not present complaints or concerns regarding individual employees or students at this time. As the district has a complaint policy that must be followed before the concern is addressed with the board. And we do have a card this evening from Miss Alicia Montez. <laughs> so I'm coming to you guys today in hopes that a graduation venue has not been set yet. Um, graduation is not something you get to do every day. It's not something that everyone gets to do in their lifetime. It really is a special event. It allows the graduate to brush away the stress of years of hard work and celebrate with the people who have been on this journey with them. Even if some are lucky enough to get a chance to graduate from college, it will not be for this achievement, achievement right now in high school. Graduation isn't just a day for you to feel proud of you. It is also a day for your family to feel proud as you walk across the stage. I'm coming to you today to ask you to please reconsider moving graduation back to TCU or to a similar venue with the same capacity. The last months of a graduate's high school career should be only worrying about prom, powder puff, senior picnic, and finals. Not having to worry about upsetting their grandparents, siblings, or others who have played an important role in them achieving this milestone because they weren't given enough tickets to graduation. This past year's graduation, I seen moms where they would pay $100 for extra tickets on social media. Moms of Burleson was selling tickets. I seen kids skipping graduation altogether because they said that it was just stressful. They didn't want to upset any of their blended families, any of their grandparents, because they weren't allowed to attend because there just wasn't enough. So I please ask you, don't make the class of 2024 go through this same predicament, move graduation to a larger venue. Thank you, Ms. Montez. All right. At this time, the Board of Trustees of the Burleson Independent School District will adjourn into closed session at 5.33 p.m. For the purpose of consideration of matters for which closed sessions are authorized by Title V, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Sections .071 through .084, whereupon the Superintendent, at the request of the President of the Board of Trustees, will present for the Board's consideration or discussion the following matters. A, consider teacher and or administrator employment or other appropriate personnel matters. B, deliberate a negotiated contract for a prospective gift or donation. C, deliberate the use of security personnel, devices and or audits, including the 2020 through 2023 district safety and security audit and the intruder detection audit. D, deliberate a matter regarding a student or student discipline, deliberation regarding real property, and consultation with your attorney. So at this time, we are going to adjourn to closed session. We'll see y'all in a little while. Yes. Hello. The Board of Trustees of the Burleson Independent School District will reconvene to open session at 6.38 p.m. 
and we have a few items to take care of from closed session. First, I recommend that the Board of Trustees ratify and approve the following individuals to be employed on administrator contracts for the 2023-2024 school year, subject to assignment by the superintendent and pending their meeting the following requirements. Proper degree is required, appropriate certification requirements as specified by the Texas Education Agency is required, and the clearance of a criminal history check is required. I could have a motion, please. Pat, second. Jerry, all in favor? I see none opposed, the motion passes. Next, I recommend that the Board of Trustees ratify and approve the following individuals to be employed on teacher and or professional contracts for the 2023-2024 school year, subject to assignment by the superintendent and pending their meeting the following requirements. One, a proper degree is required. Two, appropriate certification requirements as specified by the Texas Education Agency is required. And three, clearance of a criminal history check is required. And could I have a motion, please? Yeah. Ryan, second. Michael, all in favor? And I see all in favor. There will be none opposed. The motion passes. Okay. <laughs> Next, I recommend that the Board of Trustees grant the Board President the authority to approve new hires between now and the next regular meeting in September. The board will consider ratifying those hires at the next meeting. Ryan, second Dallas, all in favor? I see none opposed, the motion passes. So at this time, please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> the Board of Trustees adopt the order of items for the August 14th, 2023 agenda as presented. Michael, second. Pat, all in favor? I see there will be none opposed. The motion passes. And now it's special recognition with Dr. Hill. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we have three items on our agenda to recognize for our CTE students. I would like to begin by bringing up Ms. McKenzie Allen. How are y'all? I'm significantly better at speaking to students, so if I butcher this, I apologize. Um, my name is Mackenzie Allen. I'm one of the agricultural science teachers over at BHS, and tonight it's my privilege to recognize Miss Macy Ball for receiving her Lone Star degree at Texas A&M or Texas SSA convention. I am going to read this so that I don't butcher her accomplishments because they are vast and very important. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what the Lone Star degree is, it's the highest degree of membership that the state FFA association can award to a member. Um, and there are a multitude of requirements that I could go through, but we'd be here all night. What you need to know is that Macy has gone above and beyond those requirements. And I'd like to share a bit with the, you about those accomplishments. Macy has logged 939 hours outside of the classroom in dedication to leadership in the agricultural community. Of those 939 hours, 689 were spent on agricultural experience projects. She only needed 300 to receive this award. 125 hours were spent in service to her chapter. 55 were spent in career and leadership development events. 69 were spent in service to her community. Again, she only needed 25 for the reward. And these are just the ones that she remembered to log. There are countless others that didn't make the list. Macy has held an officer position in our chapter for three out of her four years, and I believe it's just because she couldn't run as a freshman. She's competed in several leadership development events, including creed speaking, quiz, senior prepared public speaking, and she's much better than I. Much to my luck, she's also a member of our poultry judging team, where I had my first opportunity to work with her. Macy has earned $24,291 
only 23,000 more than the required amount <laughs> in supervised agricultural experience earnings and has made some phenomenal ag mech projects. She's won reserve champion at San Angelo. Um, she's won division champion at Heart of Texas, reserve medal champion at County, grand champion woodworks at County, second in outdoor furniture class at Fort Worth, and third in her division at Rodeo Austin. But AgMEC isn't her only SAE project. She also raises some of the cutest little rabbits, one of which, to my husband's dismay, is one of our class pets. Her rabbits have also won several awards, including Best Opposite Breed Lionhead at Houston, Best Opposite Breed Havana at the ARB National Show. All the accomplish I've accomplishments I've mentioned tonight about Macy only scratch the surface. She's also very involved in her 4-H chapter and has a multitude of accomplishments within that organization. Wrapping up, something I believe should be recognized more than Macy's accomplishments is her character. She's a true leader who's kind, always willing to help those around her, which is why she blew this earning this award out of the water. She's so strong despite the adversity she faces, and she always keeps a smile on her face, and I admire her greatly for that. So I'm thankful for my opportunity to play the small part in her journey, and I can't wait to see where else where life takes her. Next. Before we move on, uh, Macy's got a whole, a whole bunch of family members here, and I've known them for a long time, so I'm excited. So I want to I want to recognize her parents are here. Where are you? Her daddy's okay, at the fire Chris. station tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's oh, sure. First <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I keep up with her through her grandmother at church, so I'm excited about They're what, here. what she's done. They're here. here. Well, stand up. Stand up, Grandparents. Okay. We're standing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm curious what the future plans look like. We're going to go to school. We're going to go do something else. Yes, I'm going to go to A&M for yeah. agribusiness. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Nice. Good choice. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so my name is Kayla Obush. I'm one of the four ag teachers at Centennial High School, and I would like to recognize some outstanding students who also received their Lone Star degrees this past summer. Um, we have Avery Green. <laughs> Haley Browder, <laughs> Madison Combs, <laughs> Addison Kane, <laughs> Brandon White. and Harmon Groves. So while I don't have exact statistics of each of these six students, I would like to say that the FFA Lone Star degree is the highest degree that the state of Texas offers within the National FFA organization. That being said, some of the requirements of the FFA Lone Star degree include an active membership, Supervised agriculture experience, which may include, but not limited to, ag mechanics, science fair, livestock showing, and much more. Leadership development events, FFA involvement, classroom education, community service, leadership roles, and FFA knowledge. Earning the FFA Lone Star degree signifies student dedication to their personal growth, ag education, leadership skills, and community service. It's a notable accomplishment that affects their commitment 
or reflects their commitment to the FFA's core values and prepares them for future success in their academic and professional pursuits within the ag industry. As an advisor, we have witnessed their growth firsthand, from the initial steps as young members to the accomplished individuals they are today. These students have not only excelled academically, but have also invested countless hours in projects, competitions, and community service initiatives that showcase their commitment to the values of FFA. Their achievements are a testament to the strong foundation that our chapter provides. And I would also like to express my gratitude to the entire school board for supporting and recognizing their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you to all of the parents that were here to support their students. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Okay. Hello, I'm Allie Lesner. I'm one of the FCCLA um, advisors at Burleson High School. Um, this will be my second year at BHS, and um, I'm here to recognize our student, Rianne Alderson. You want to come up? Um, she advanced to nationals for FCCLA this year, and... We are just so, so, so proud of her. Um, she worked so hard all year long. Um, she competed in a job interview event, and basically she had to put together a very professional, thorough portfolio with recommendation letters, resumes, cover letters. Um, she put in so much work and effort. Um, she practiced interviewing even with Mr. Leek. Um, so she, she worked hard all year, and it really paid off. Um, she got third place, second place at region, third place at state, and then 19th nationally. So it was a huge accomplishment for her. If you interviewed with me, you might have won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. little Sorry, little uh, <laughs> she, she just did so awesome. And I also wanted to recognize her for what she's done for our chapter as a whole. Um, you know, our chapter was pretty small before she came in and kind of took over and took charge. Um, she basically doubled our membership numbers. We started doing more fundraisers. We raised a lot more money. Um, and we're just going into this next school year with a really firm foundation. So it's really exciting. Um, and, yeah, we just wanted to recognize her because she just, she did awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> Can I go ahead and have my TSA students come up here with me? Can we first ask, what does FCCLA stand for? It stands for Family, Career, Community, Leaders of America. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Shasta Tywater. I am the um, sponsor or one of three for TSA. Um, this is Technology Student Association. 
Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. I didn't realize I would get that. Um, so our students went to Kentucky this summer and got to compete with their video games and digital photography. Um, first, we have um, high school video game design with Ethan Martin. He got first in state and was a national competitor. Come up here, Ethan. Next, we have Ellie Hickman. She did middle school digital photography and got seventh in the nation. And last but not least, we have Hudson Burkeen, Palin Estrada, uh, Catriella Ayers for middle school video game design, and they got seventh in the nation. I'm sorry, I didn't prepare. students here. If you're here, stand up so we can see who you are. You can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, I do also have a question. Can we find the digital photography, the video game design, all that stuff that you enter? Can we let, can we see it somewhere? Um, absolutely. We have both video games on our Facebook page. I don't know that we've published pictures. We'll work on that. Well, you don't have to. I'm just curious. I just want to see it. You don't have to. I just... The video games are on our um, ddf-gaming.com, and we have it on our website. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Now, you're welcome to stay for the financials, which you don't have for us. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Or Brenda. Appreciate it. Good talk. Good talk. All right, board members, do any of you have anything you would like to add to our meeting this evening? Convocation was awesome again. Um, it was really a uh, very, it's just always so exciting to me to see the beginning of school year and all the enthusiasm and the speaker was amazing. Uh, I did a 10 second, and I'm, I'm exaggerating, I can't do anything in 10 seconds, but anyway, um, I, I shared the essence of it with my lady Sunday school class yesterday and challenged them all to be coffee beans. So um, it was really a very good message, very good. Thank you, Ms. Pat. All right, so we will move on to our information items, and we are going to have a safety, security, and intruder detection audit update. And it's pretty easy. Good evening, everyone. As we're all getting ready for the new school year, it's important to give you all, our parents and our community, an update on what we're doing from a safety and security standpoint going into the new year. The first update I have is on our SSO program. I'm happy to report all 10 SSOs that we hired last year are returning to us this year to keep our elementary campuses safe. They spent the last week in training and getting ready for the start of school. Some of the training they've been through includes hand-to-hand -hand combat and disarming techniques, simulator training with the Fort Worth Police Department, firearm training, and time at the shooting range honing their accuracy. They also worked in partnership with Burleson PD and took part in active shooter training and exercises. 
Today they were here in Burleson doing the Texas DPS school safety training and that training will continue through tomorrow. In addition to all the training they've been doing, they've done equipment inspections, reviewed standard operating procedures and expectations, and I know they're all excited to be back on their campuses. And in partnership with the Burleson Police Department, our SRO program has expanded this school year. We've added three additional SROs for a total of 11. These additional SROs will allow some additional flexibility with coverage and ensures that we have an armed officer at all of our campuses. The SROs have also been doing additional training to get ready for the new year. In addition to the active shooter training, they've also done ballistic shield training, digital threat assessment training, and behavior threat assessment training. Continuing on with the training theme, as of today, all district staff have also completed mandatory safety and security training. Our district staff partnered with first responders to provide craze or civilian response to active shooter, CPR, first aid, behavior threat assessment, standard response protocol, crisis go, and BISD safety protocols, including locked door requirements. I know this was a huge undertaking, so I want to thank Courtney Peets, Matt Arlett, uh, Sergeant Pilgrim, Scott Shea, and also our first responders who joined us to help and organize and put on that training. It was impressive. You had different groups, cafeteria, auditorium, hundreds of people, morning session, and then hundreds more in the afternoon, and got everybody trained. And I sat through a lot of it, and uh, back and forth. And I got to tell you, it was it was insightful, and the engagement level of our of our teachers and, and employees was amazing. I was impressed at the engagement level of our employees. Awesome. Great sign. Awesome. Next update I have is on uh, some grant funding that we've applied for and received. One of the grants that we applied for is going to cover all costs associated with our Crisis Go safety platform, and then we free up those budgeted funds that we can use them on other safety projects. The latest grant we applied for and received was for a little over $600,000. Um, this grant is primarily to provide funds to harden our campuses and for other safety and security upgrades. We're not going to go into specific details in public forum and exactly what those upgrades and what those hardening uh, measures are, um, but uh, essentially it's going to add physical security to all of our campuses throughout the district. Some additional updates. Um, the installation of safety bollards at our campuses has, has started. We've already had them installed at two campuses and we will continue installation throughout the school year to get those at all of our campuses throughout the district. Um, and as we move forward to the new school year, we're going to continue with the safety protocols we put in place last year and continue monitoring and improving those protocols. Uh, Mr. Shea Hay is going to continue his weekly door checks at all of our campuses. The SROs, SSOs, and campus administrators will continue their do daily door checks. Um, Matt Arlett will continue to work with campus administrators on behavioral threat assessments and working to identify any red flags and provide immediate intervention and support. And we're going to just continue doing whatever it takes to keep our kids and staff and students safe throughout the year. I'd be happy to answer any, any questions. Sir. Thank you, Steve, and I appreciate uh, the work that you all and your team have done. Uh, well, last year was huge, and uh, the improvements that uh, we saw from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the work that's been going on over the summer, and then coming back this year and preparing to enhance and improve what we're already doing. And, uh, you know, you did uh, share some information with me, and the good news is, is, is a lot of the responses uh, as a part of the surveying that you did, is that our teachers, for the most part, feel safe. And, uh, and that came through in the surveys. And uh, you know, if our teachers are comfortable and feel safe, they're gonna do a much better job of teaching our students, and making sure our students feel safe. And, uh, and that's important. That enhances the learning environment. And uh, I appreciate that. And as a dad, and there's a whole lot of other parents out there who are entrusting their children to us every day. Every day they are sharing their pride and joy with us and entrusting that their child will be safe. And I appreciate the fact that you and your folks are making sure that we're doing that. And it uh, makes me feel good. And I know it makes a whole lot of other parents feel good. So thank you for what you do. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, before I ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda, does anybody have comments or questions regarding our consent agenda? 
All right, then could I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Jerry, a second. Dallas, all in favor? I see there will be none opposed. The motion carries. And now it's time to talk about money. <laughs> Ms. money lady. Music to my ears. I love that word. Um, good evening, board members, Dr. Jimerson and staff. I don't know if you all noticed, but that Macy um, girl from BHS that had all the accolades, she came and sat back down, and I thought she was going to stay for the financials, and I thought, what a great kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, she should be at the top of her class. She was and then she for left. some more hours. But somebody had to convince hours. her. Somebody was like, we can leave. So I think she wanted to stay. But <laughs> I can send I her think, my PowerPoint. What did you just say? I think so, too. Linda. You think she wanted to stay? I think she wanted to stay. I thought she thought it would be a good thing to do. Maybe I'm get sure some more hours. Is. You're probably right. She learned a little bit. I'm going to go with that. We're going to go with that. I'm going to yes, send her my... knowing her, you're probably right. She Thank probably you. did want to stay. See? She's considerate. Um, yeah, she can sit right by me. <laughs> no kidding. Um, okay, so monthly financials. We are wrapping up. Uh, this will be the last time I stand up here for the 2023 <coughs> school year. We're doing June 30th um, until the audit. So when the audit comes in November, then we'll discuss it one more time. But uh, we're just wrapping up here. If you see, we're trying to get to 100% of what we projected because we've done our final budget amendments. We're about 89% for revenues. Uh, last piece is just our state funding that we'll receive in September. Um, and then we'll start getting our near final and shoring up those. And so that kind of happens throughout the year. We get CCMR results in March and April. So it's always a constant uh, shoring up. But, eight, but in September, we'll get the biggest amount. For expenditures, uh, we're at 96.7%. We do have a few uh, journal entries that we'll make. The auditors came and did interim. Uh, when we get into field work, we'll make some adjustments, and so we'll have the final when we come for the audit. For general fund, um, we're at $109 million. Uh, that will increase, and then our expenditures that are, are at $116.3 million. For food service, uh, they're at $7.8 million, which is less than last year, and that's because the federal funding really increased the food service amounts that we received. Um, but we still did receive federal funding of $4.7 million, and then our expenditures are a little over $7 million, which was really great because the expenditures didn't grow so much or, or uh, grow so much even though we were getting federal funding for that. So Emily and her staff did a great job. Uh, for debt service, revenues are at $34.3 million, expenditures at thirty-nine point seven. million. Uh, just a reminder, we do have $22 million, uh, of a fund balance from that, and we use those funds to make our uh, August 1st payment. Special revenue funds. So we are through the first three quarters, so we have about a quarter more to go because we'll, these will uh, go through September 30th of 23, and we're at 50.4% 50, 50 expense. Child care. Uh, revenues are at $759,000, and our expenditures are at $636,000. Uh, capital projects, which is our oil and gas, uh, you'll see beginning balance $12.5 million, um, 1.2 increase uh, for this year, which is about $535,000 up from last year, and uh, expenditures at $39,000, so $13.6 million in the oil and gas account. Mm -hmm. It's a good year. It, the interest has helped quite a bit, too. Yep, not so much. Payments over ten thousand. Uh, if you'll see the majority out of one ninety nine, and then we do use our special revenue funds, uh, our capital project account for Norwood, and then our workers comp. And the details are in your packet. If you have any questions, please let me know. And speaking of which, I hear Norwood is looking yes, primo, really good. Yes, it looks yeah. really good. They're doing Meet the Teacher tomorrow night, and it's it's fantastic. Sam, you ready? ready? Yes. All right. Is it looking sharp? It all right. Amazing. All right. And if you haven't been by, please drive by. I think you will be impressed. Yeah, and Sam's got the bug. She's so excited now. She's ready to do the inside, do oh, all I this. Know. I know. Yeah. She's she's very excited. So, yeah. It's, it's really... not going to require more money, is it? Just say she no, tells Sam. Me. She's like, Just I'm so no. frugal. I'm so frugal. That's what she'll say. I'm frugal. <laughs> uh, but yes, it looks wonderful. Um. Tax report uh, for the month of June. Our collections were um, 113 for M and O and 59,000 for our INS. And so year to date, we're at about 93 million for tax collections. Capital update. So Norwood, um, like I said, you'll have to drive by. It looks fantastic. 
And uh, we're done with GDDS and higher ed facility will come off this uh, graph. We'll just go down to Norwood and Mound. So those are our last two capital projects for now. And then quarterly investment report. Uh, so the numbers are all in your package. If you'll see the majority are in our pool. Uh, we're at the highest rate we've been and we will not do CVs until the, the, the pools start to decline. And so we haven't seen that. It's still been growing uh, just by a few percentage points, but we, we'll take it and we're very excited about that. So once that starts to decrease or plateau, then we'll start investing in CDs so that way we, we can lock in at a good rate. And that's it for me, unless you have any questions. And then of course, I guess we will be getting the information we need and coming back next month with tax rate and yes. other things, right? Yes, we've completed our uh, truth in taxation report and we've received our number from uh, TEA, and so it's it's good news. So yeah, I will be back next month. Good news is good news. I like good news. Yeah, I've All run right. some numbers. It's exciting. So I that. will come back next month awesome. and share Thank that with you. Ready. You're welcome. Okay, on to the action item of approving update 119. I was trying to remember what update we were on in 2004. It seems like we've had a lot of <laughs> we do get a lot of updates <clears throat> and a lot of them are routine housekeeping much of this one is that as well we went over this last month i'm not going to say it but uh, we'll cover it quickly tonight the cpc electronic records policy um, the superintendent must bring to you and review staff development and then this is the one that we already do uh, resolution to convene the school health advisory council Courtney already does that and then we have uh, teachers providing dyslexia services shall have training opportunities. And then we have the early childhood intervention by the child's third birthday. And we no longer have to report funding for GT annually. Students have options for completing FAFSAs. And then number of employees who participate in trauma-informed care training is not reportable, just like GT funding. And then we have uh, language, minor language adjustments on the policy prohibiting discrimination and harassment against students. And that's it. There were three local policies or local driven, locally driven changes. One is your board meeting times at 5.30. Another is that TPES is the evaluator, is the evaluation model for administrators. And then EIC for uh, criteria for students who are eligible for VAL and SAL. Again, we covered everything last month. Just a highlight to remind you of what you're being asked to adopt tonight. Okay. Comments? I have a, a clear. Okay, the thing with the, the GT that we don't have to repeat, report that, um, that's not affecting our staffing of the gifted program or anything, is it? doesn't affect anything. We just don't have to send in a report about the funding. Okay. Well, they just got tired of getting paperwork. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that as long as we're still getting doing and taking mm -hmm. care of our GT kids. Okay. No changes. That's what I wanted to know, thank you. You really think I'd have brought that to you? <laughs> No. <laughs> I like my job. I like my I only spent 10 years doing that, Brett, so. <laughs> All right, then, if I could please have a motion that the Board of Trustees approve these policy revisions as presented. Ryan, a second. Pat. All in favor? I see none opposed. The motion passes. The last item for us this evening is to consider the student code of conduct with Ms. Arthur. Good evening. So each year we bring the student code of conduct to the board for approval. Uh, we go through a process each year where we read through and we make sure that all of the things that Tom has spoken about that have changed our practice um, because of law, uh, that we update those things and we bring it to you again. Okay, Questions. comments, questions? I noticed we added our web address in there. <laughs> I saw that. We did. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Are you good? I'm good. Okay, if then I could have a motion, please, that we approve the student code of conduct for 2023-24. Jerry, in a second. Dallas, all in favor? All right, I see none opposed. The motion passes. All right, if no one has anything else to add, we are adjourned at 7.13.